Hello, this is Kevin Sharp from Newspaper and Education from the Dallas Morning News. I've been surfing Thursday, February 19th, e-edition of the Dallas Morning News, and have found lots of helpful educational content you may want to consider in order to inc incorporate into your lesson plans. Plus, I'd like to share some strategies and techniques to consider when introducing and reinforcing these concepts and skills. For example, media criticism. It's important to understand for students to understand the concept of developing news as well as the traditional role of the editorial page. Uh, in economics, uh, to discuss economic elements and how they interact with each other and how one impacts the other. Uh, as far as geography is concerned, using geographical data through charts and graphs and other visual tools. Uh, and then also incorporate uh, the elements of literature in order to develop plots, characters, and settings uh, in order to fictionalize situations based on current events. Uh, and then when we're talking about other types of language art, there are two things that I'd like to discuss. Uh, ways to demonstrate the impact of proper word choice in regards to positive and negative connotation as well as utilizing prefixes as a context clue in order to decipher what, wor what words mean. The economy certainly has been the number one topic for months now, but this week there's been some significant developments. Just take a look at the front pages over the last few days. As you can see from Thursday, February 19th's e-edition, there's some significant coverage regarding President Obama's plan to address the foreclosure crisis in the United States. All week long, there have been developments regarding the economy. Take, for example, on Monday, February 16th, when the week began, um, you'll see that there's some coverage uh, involving President Obama's agenda for the week, which, uh, looking back, pretty much uh, was spot on uh, regarding stimulus as well as housing. Uh, and then when you talk about Tuesday, or on Tuesday's e-edition of the Dallas Morning News, uh, there, was some cover there was some local coverage and how the economy situation has pretty much impacted um, uh, the local city budget as well and, and how that's going to impact uh, some services and uh, some services that locally we expect and, and, and uh, benefit from. And then on Wednesday, uh, there's more talk about the automakers and the auto industry and how their uh, performance is impacting our economy. And then again, back to Thursday's the edition, we, again, uh, we see that President Obama uh, has a, introduces a plan to address the foreclosure crisis. Now, while the foreclosure crisis is a national one, um, the issue is also localized with, uh, with the inclusion of this map of the region that illustrates the number of foreclosures throughout the area, uh, as well as the locations where they've been making the biggest impact. Uh, and then you'll see that the story also continues. I'm going to go ahead and move on to page 12A, where you'll see the additional details. Um, plus, uh, you'll also see that there's another map uh, but this time it's of the entire United States that tracks foreclosures geographically, just like the front page map did uh, involving our local region. The issue uh, of foreclosure is localized even further uh, when you see this story on the right hand side of the page uh, about the uh, Texas State Legislature uh, looking into the issue and its ripple effect it could have throughout the, uh, throughout the state. Now back to the main story, uh, you'll also see that there are additional um, visual resources uh, or, or graphs and charts uh, that kind of, uh, that, that explain the issue, uh, explain the benefits and how the things work, uh, as well as a, uh, a Q&A uh, uh, sidebar where it just pretty much bullet points um, the, not only does it just talk about uh, the key points here, but it also goes through uh, this Q&A of how will it help me, will it help me, a quick read and a quick fix. Now, while all the facts and figures and political developments uh, and economic data can be informative, uh, there's a human side to, this economic, uh, to these economic issues as well. There's always going to be some sensitivity involved in an issue like foreclosures and job losses and the stress and the anxiety uh, that families are experiencing right now. More than likely, there are students in your class who might actually be personally dealing with these issues and not totally understand what's happening. 
these two front page pictures might be effective prompts to get students to express their emotional responses to the issues as well as develop a personal understanding or empathy of what others might ex be experiencing through this to the to this uh, crisis perhaps have your students imagine what it would be like to be the people who lived in these homes photographed here uh, and using the information that they glean from the captions and the story they can write uh, from the articles involving the foreclosure crisis they can write a short story using a first person narration or write a letter as one of these people uh, to a friend explaining what they're going to do next now something interesting I noticed when reviewing uh, the week's news regarding the economy uh, was was uh, the term bailout was something that you that has gotten a lot of exposure for quite a while uh, but when I saw lifeline in this headline it kind of stood out uh, and it was something new uh, so if you were to search for the term bailout just in today's newspaper B A I L O U T uh, and search for um, uh, its references throughout today's newspaper or, or uh, Thursday February 19th newspaper you'll see that there are four results uh, the first one being in the main story you'll notice the bailout is highlighted and you see the arrow uh, pointing towards where the uh, reference the first reference is uh, and you can see where other places the term bailout is used now if I expand the search to whole week uh, and look at the last seven days worth of newspapers you see that it's going to jump the, the results are going to jump up to 27 uh, and just in the first reference here you see uh, from an editorial again you'll see bailout is highlighted and there's an arrow uh, pointing out the word you'll see that you know uh, it, it's been used a lot here it is in, in an editorial column now go back to that headline from uh, February 19th and uh, do this little this activity here uh, with your students have a discussion 75 billion dollar housing plan offers a lifeline now replace the word lifeline with bailout 75 billion dollar housing plan offers a bailout uh, see how the meaning the perception and the overall connotation of the headline kind of changes this is a teaching moment that you can use with your students to discuss the importance of word choice in language arts there's a negative connotation when using a word like bailout but lifeline there's more of a positive connotation to it more uplifting more promising more hopeful what I'm going to do now is take you to the editorial page, and that's on page 14A. Uh, and we go ahead and jump to that. Uh, the foreclosure issue is receiving a lot of coverage, and the newspaper itself is contributing to the discussion and the debate, making a strong statement regarding the issue on the editorial page. Traditionally, the editorial pages are reserved for opinions from readers, columnists, as well as uh, the newspaper itself. Uh, historically considered to be the stewards of the community uh, the editorial board publishes unsigned editorials on behalf of the newspaper making recommendations agreeing or disagreeing on solutions or proposals or issues uh, and then this is where people are praised criticized or encouraged uh, and in this edition there is a clear concise and powerful statement in favor of the president's proposal as it was reported here as in most editorials it its analysis it, it analyzes the facts and makes a judgment it might be something the reader will agree with or disagree with and just because the editorial board takes one position on an issue it might not be the right one but it's one that it feels strongly about and it recommends to the community that this is going to be the most re relevant uh, way to go uh, you'll also see another editorial here in the name of charity where they recommend that Jerry Jones uh, name the new stadium the Salvation Army Stadium uh, and if you were to take your students to the letters to the editor page and let me blow that up for you a little bit so you can see having your students look through the last seven e editions of the Dallas Morning News and ask them to find uh, editor uh, letters to the editor that uh, discuss the economy Okay, one more thing before we go. Uh, I want to take you to the other editorial page. Let me blow up uh, the page just a little bit. I'm sorry, blow it down a little bit so you can see the whole page. Uh, um, the editorial section of the daily newspaper contains two sides, one side being the editorials and the letter to the editor, 
and then the other side uh, contains viewpoints, which we call viewpoints, which is uh, dedicated to columnists, and these are signed editorials. And there's one here at the bottom is called "Is the Is Economy Being Micromanaged or Guided?" And I thought that this was a really unique opportunity. Uh, to discuss prefixes in, like micro and its opposite, macro, and lead the students through a discussion on how they can use prefixes to decipher the meanings of words. Uh, so that's it for now. Um, why don't you take a few moments and uh, surf through the uh, e-edition and see for yourself all the other articles and, and information and reports that can help your students apply the skills and knowledge that they need to succeed as well as get them engaged in the world around them. Thank you very much for your time as well as for everything that you do. Goodbye.